Gone. There it is. Not there. G'day, folks. It's DIY Guy One Two Three here, bringing you another do-it-yourself video. I've got the King Bolin YA Two Hundred that I'm going to show you. Connecting it to these three vehicles, we've got an 06 GMC half ton, we've got a 2007 Corolla, we've got a 2012 Mustang GT. We're going to check it out to see if this inexpensive code reader will be able to clear the codes on those three vehicles. Ironically, at this point, I had no check engine code set on my vehicles. So to simulate a code problem, I disconnected the mass airflow sensor on each of the three vehicles I started them up and let them idle until they ran their test and set the check engine light. Then I turned the vehicle off and reconnected uh, the mass airflow sensor. So in the Chevy half ton, and there's the mass airflow sensor. That was disconnected and has now reconnected. In the Corolla, there's the mass airflow sensor. And in the Mustang, there's the mass airflow sensor. So the problem is actually gone, but the code should still remain set in the car's computer. We're going to take the code readers one by one and go through each vehicle and see if it will read the code and clear the code. This is what arrived in the mail. We have a USB charge cable, the very thin instruction manual, and the unit itself. It was all packaged in this container right here, this box, and that came in a bubble wrapped envelope. With the unit itself, it has the OBD2 port, there is no battery inside of this, so it does not work unless it's connected to either the car's OBD2 system so that it can get power, or there's a USB port in the bottom so that you can, uh, most likely, if you have a car that doesn't supply OBD2 power, uh, you can use the USB port to connect it to the bottom of the OBD2 scanner and then connect that into a USB adapter for your cigarette lighter. That's perhaps one use of the USB port, and then I know that at some point, uh, King Bolin will come out with firmware updates for this thing and you'll need the USB port for that. Okay, so I've connected it to the OBD2 port in this pickup truck and this device powered on right away. And we have basically four main menu screens. Diagnosis, DTC lookup, battery, and settings. I'm going to take you through the settings screen first. And so languages, if we want a different than English, which I don't. Um, units, you can go from metric to English. Leave it on English. Uh, system info. This would be useful if you had trouble with the machine and you were working with the manufacturer. They would want to know what software version you're using and the date of the software and also the hardware version. So that's stated here. And then we have self-test. So this is running through a test of this unit right here. Nothing to do with the vehicle. And if we do the display test, it runs through the various colors, red, which is more of an orange, green, and then blue, and then white, and then probably black, yep, and then the test will finish. And it basically just shows you that all the pixels are working in this screen, or I'm not sure if pixels is the right term anymore, but anyway, shows you that the screen is working. And then if we do a keyboard test, it shows a layout of the keyboard with the orange indicating the button they want you to press. And when you press the button, the orange moves to a different button. And in this way, you verify the entire keyboard all okay next we'll go into the battery mode and this shows you a real-time graph of the battery you'll see the uh, graph starting over there to the left and the minimum voltage is 12 volts and the maximum is 12 volts that's and the current voltage is 12 volts showing up top there that's because we are just sitting the vehicle steady state but i'm going to turn the key to the on position i'm not going to start it and you'll see the battery voltage took a little drop and it's measuring 11.7 and now I'll turn the headlights on, on high beam, and now we're at 11.4, there was another dip, and now I'm going to turn the uh, fan on high to draw there, and turn the radio on, and turn the electric seats on, oh, I guess they won't turn on when the vehicle's not running, but basically we're now at 11.1 volts, and what else can I do, I can put the windows up and down. Put the windows down, so there's 10.7 volts. So now, and then I'll put the windows back up, back at 10.7 volts. And they're slow to go up with a low voltage like that. And then I'll turn the fan off and turn the radio off and turn the high beams off and turn the lights off. And you'll see the voltage rise up again. So that's completely expected behavior. The battery might be a little bit discharged, uh, but it's pretty neat to see that graph. And if you're tracking over time it might be useful to see um, you know just 
how much the voltage fluctuates. Back out of there, and then we'll go into diagnosis. So it's detecting the vehicle right now. And it found a protocol that it liked. And it's telling me the malfunction indicator status light is on. That's the check engine light. The DTC count is one. Uh, monitor okay. There's a few other pieces of data there. I don't really know what they are. But basically it's, it's confirming that the light is on. So we'll back out of there. And then we can read codes. And I'm expecting to see some type of a mass airflow sensor code. We'll look for stored codes. Knock sensor two circuit. Oh, so that's been a problem with this vehicle for a while, unrelated to the test I was doing. Okay. Uh, it is, I'll look for pending codes. Yeah, mass air, mass or volume airflow A circuit low. One of two, knock sensor low. Okay, so those are the pending codes. So let's back out of there and let's look for freeze frame data to see if there was any when those codes were set. Here's freeze frame data that shows short term fuel trim, engine coolant temperature when it happened, other details here, the RPM that was uh, active when this happened, how fast I was going, a lot of different details there. Throttle position at 15.3%. So that's the freeze frame data associated when one of those check engine codes was set might be useful to you at some point if you needed to wanted to know certain details about the operating conditions when it was set next we'll look at live data and so if we look at all data streams it's telling us to hold the ok button for two seconds to make the selected item in front i think what they really mean is on top and i'll show you what i mean in a second so the very top indicator is dtc but let's pretend i wanted to go and highlight uh, throttle position there it is right there I'm going to press it and hold it, and now it's on the very top of the list above DTC. So the, the settings that are of interest, you can bump them up to the top of the list here. Now, it's showing 20% throttle right now. Don't know why, because I'm not actually touching the throttle, so it seems to be maybe a bit of a calibration issue there. There's 100% throttle, so that looks accurate at 99.6. And then well, if I let right off, I get 18.4. I can't quite explain that. When I did this test on the Mustang and I wasn't touching the throttle pedal, I got something greater than 0%, so not sure, not sure why. But anyway, you can definitely see the live data response. I'll hit it again, and I'll release again, and there we go. You can actually graph some of this data. We go in and graph again. Uh, I'll pick on throttle position sensor because it's within my control. And how do I make it do that? I've got OK set there. Oh, OK, so when you when you select your parameters, and then hit the back button, it shows you all the ones that it's going to graph. So there's a 20% throttle, which again, I'm not, I'm not touching the pedal, but for argument's sake, there's full throttle, and there's off, and there's full throttle again. So in this way, you can graph data. Let me see if we can do a couple of different things. That one, and that one, and that one. Wonder what happens if I pick all three. Oh, one of three. Okay, interesting. And if I hit the down arrow, I'll get the intake air temperature. And I'll get the RPMs. That's pretty cool. Okay. So you can graph multiple parameters there. You can also record. Press OK to select which parameter to record. Let's do our, again, throttle position because it's under my control. I'll pick that one, I'll back out, and I'm going to put it in memory slot one, and I want to OK to overwrite that, and now I'm going to put my foot to the floor and let go. So I've captured 10 frames, 11 I think, so I'll back out, and now I'll do playback of memory slot one, and it says press OK to switch to the next frame. So there's frame one, frame two, frame three, frame, oh, there we go, 67 or 64%. There's 99, 99, and then I'm back down to where my foot was off. So yeah, it's uh, it's kind of clunky where you scroll through the frames by pressing the OK button, but you know, it's doable. And then if we look at IM readiness, this is the set of tests that the computer runs to make sure it's ready for emissions testings in places where are required to pass emissions tests. You can use this tool to very quickly 
determine, hey, my vehicle is ready or no, I need to drive it around for a while to run all these tests because not all the emissions tests run as soon as you start the engine. Sometimes they need the vehicle needs to be on the highway, driven at a constant speed, at a constant throttle for a certain number of seconds, and then it will run the test. And if you never drive at highway speed, you might not ever complete some of these tests. It, you know, if you're trying to beat the system, you could say, oh, I'll just clear all my codes and then I'll go for my emissions test. But that's not what it's, it's not trying to prove that you don't have any codes in the computer. It's going to prove or test that you have run these special emissions tests. And of course, you can see that I have several greens, but the red for the EVAP uh, system, I don't know whether that's related to my check engine code with the uh, NOx sensor or the mass airflow sensor. But in any case, um, that's what that screen is for. And if you if you have to pass an emissions test, if you live in an area like that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, next, there's this mode six, which I don't know what these tests do. Um, yeah, they're just, I'm not sure what they do. I'm going to back out. There's nothing really that interesting there. Then we have O2 sensor tests. Bank 2 sensor 2. Let's try that one, see what it says. Selected mode is not supported. So, yeah, this is a new device. Maybe it doesn't work with all vehicles. Uh, that's common with all scanners when they first come out. They don't support all vehicles, but over time the support grows. So, not too worried about it. Component test, EVAP leak test. Let's see what that says. It says command sent. Okay. Not too much of interest right there with the component testing. If you want to look up the VIN for your vehicle, some people seem to, that seems to be a thing where people don't know what their VIN is, even though they can read it by their glove compartment uh, or on below their windshield or on the side of the door frame or in their vehicle registration. But anyway, that's a one button to get you the VIN. This is a one button to tell you that uh, status on IM readiness. And this is a one button that reads any DTCs that are causing your check engine code. So again, we'll look at the pending codes. Let's check that out. We have a P0102 for the mass airflow sensor. So let's for kicks, P0102, remember that. Let's for kicks, go back out here. And if we'll go into DTC lookup, P0102, here we go. So if I say, this is a General Motors, let's hopefully, yep, GM, okay. So P0102. Zero, two. Let's see what that says. Okay, so it's looking. But not that helpful, I guess. Okay, so let's get down to it to see if we can clear uh, the codes. Let's see here. Going to diagnosis. We've been doing all our review stuff here. But I want to see if we can clear that code right there. Okay, I don't want that. I want to do erase codes. Okay, do you want to clear the trouble codes or clear all the emissions related diagnostic information? Engine off, key on. Okay. It says DTCs have been cleared. Check engine light's still on, but that may be on only because the key's on. So if I go back into read codes again. Pending codes, no pending codes are stored. Stored codes, no codes are stored. All right, so I'm gonna turn my key off, pull out the DTC, or sorry, the OBD2 connector, and start it up, and I want that check engine code to be gone. Gone, there it is, not there. Okay, that's one of three days. Okay, we're now inside the Toyota Corolla. There's its beautiful orange check engine light. It says it's detecting the vehicle. And it says the uh, status is on. The DTC count is two. John okay, like so let's back out of there. And go into read codes and stored codes. Mass airflow sensor. And intake air temperature sensor circuit high. That's not surprising. They're the same sensor module. So uh, that's completely expect expected. And then pending codes, no pending codes, okay. So if we back out of here, now let's look for freeze frame data. And there's your freeze frame data when this code was set. So I won't review that. 
And then if we look up live data, all data, just gonna see what data it will pull from this Toyota Corolla. And again, there's throttle position sensor, 18.8%. And it goes to 80%. And I'm going from zero to 100. So there's something off with the throttle position. Maybe if the if the King Bowen team see that, they might be able to provide a software update to correct that. But anyway, okay. So we can see live data. We can, let's see if we can erase the code. Do you want to clear all codes? DTCs have been cleared, but the light is still on the dash. Let's see. Let's read the codes again. Stored codes. No codes are stored. No pending. So that light is on. I'm going to turn the key off. Pull the connector. Boy, it was hard starting there. Did not want to start, but that's probably because it's getting used to the new mass airflow sensor that's been reconnected. So the code did not come back. So this one's fixed. On to the next. Okay, we just hooked up to the beast, the Mustang. Here we go. Let's see if we do some diagnosis. There's my check engine light down there. Well, let's see if there are any stored codes in this thing. Stored codes. No codes are stored. Oh, there we go. Okay, pending code. Mass airflow, air volume, circuit. Okay. Intake air temperature, same as the Corolla. Same unit was mass airflow and intake air temperature. Let's look for permanent codes. That is new on the Mustang. I didn't see that on the other vehicles. So, yeah, so we have this check engine light here, and let's see what we can do for uh, freeze frame data. Okay, so we did get some freeze frame data. Yeah, it idled the vehicle, and it's, it picked up the problem at 1,200 RPM. We weren't moving, intake air temperature. So this intake air temperature is showing minus 40. That is not correct. Interesting. Yeah, there's some calibration stuff that needs to be refined here, I think. So wrapping this up. Basically, given the low, low, low cost, what it advertises is an engine code reader, and it does that very well. It reads the engine codes, and it can clear the codes, and it can tell you some other diagnostic information, some other live data, RPMs and various other things uh, are, are captured and visible using this tool. That's a bonus. I think for the price of it, if it does anything more than check and clear the engine codes, you might be asking too much. If, if I was looking at, you know, who would be the right purchaser for this one, it would be the beginner DIY person who's only interested in doing engine diagnostic work. They don't need to check body control module. ABS, power seat modules, and all the other stuff that's not controlled by the, com the engine's computer. Because this is great for reading engine computer codes, but it doesn't have the ability to read other codes. And that's not what it's marketed to do. So hopefully that's been helpful for you to understand what this offers. And if you have a basic need for a basic code reader, you might think this is for you. So that'll wrap this one up. If you like watching videos about OBD2 scanners, diagnostic of electrical issues on vehicles, 